Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply. We've got a rifle, we need a scabbard, and it is well past time we did a project video on this. We're gonna go with a simple design, but a classic look. Now it's gonna be a little bit longer video. I apologize for that, but we're gonna take our time and we're gonna do it right. This is gonna look good. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there. I'm gonna take you straight to the website. Also, if you wanna know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over to our pattern table, get started. We've got a pretty good sized pattern here. It's a little too large to be comfortable on our pattern table. So we'll look at what we're doing, step over to our main table, look at the easiest way to make this pattern absolutely symmetrical. Then we'll come back, look at our digital picks for specifics. We're really just cutting three pieces here. We've got our main body, and then we've got our two straps, one at 24 and one at 36 inches. That's all we're doing for the main body. But right here, this is a rifle scabbard. We've got to add in a traditional basket weave. That is gonna be beautiful. We're just gonna do this on the ends. I like that design. Okay, let's step over to our main table. We're not going to spend a lot of time here, but it's a great way to make sure all of our projects, all of our patterns are symmetrical. So let's start right here. This was the shipping paper. If you order a piece of leather from Weaver, it's gonna come wrapped in this. I'm almost as happy to see this as I am the leather because this makes a great prototype pattern material. And the pieces are huge. We can get a briefcase widthwise out of one of these. So let's take a piece of this large enough, we think, for our pattern. And I'm gonna scribe a line right down the middle with a straight edge. That gives me a center line and a fold line. So now I can fold this over, I can make all my measurements, all my marks, and I know it's gonna be perfectly symmetrical. Even if we have to mark holes that need to line up on both sides, super easy to do. Now I'll take this and transfer this over to my pattern sheeting. It's great pattern material. It's very durable, easy to mark, easy to cut. But even with this, I'm gonna work on one side because for our, our windows, for our basket weave, I can simply flip that to mark. Now, one last point, because curves. These can be tough. We've got some great French curves, but for larger curves, how about we rely, we rely on our kitchen? Yeah, if I can say that, we've got all kinds of options in the kitchen that are gonna help us out with curves, with our artwork. But one big note, let's make sure we get this back to our kitchen because that can open a real can of worms. All right, back to our pattern table. Let's look at some specifics. Let's start with a digital pick of our main body first. So total length, 32 inches long, our width at our widest point, 14 and a quarter inches, and at our thinnest, six inches. Now on the left end, we're gonna start our stitch line one inch out either side of our center line. On our oblongs, we can drop these in pretty much anywhere we want. But for this design, we're gonna come in seven inches. Now right here, I'm gonna find a center point between my center line and my edge. From that, I'm gonna come out one and a half inch either side for a three inch spread. Down here, we're coming down 17 inches. I'm gonna do the same thing, but now let's just go three quarters of an inch either side, giving us a one and a half inch spread. Okay, let's jump over to our straps and our basket weave window. So on our straps, three quarters of an inch wide, we're gonna cut two of these. We're gonna cut one at 24 inches in length and one at 36. Now on our basket weave, we're just coming in three quarters of an inch from our edge and we're giving it a three quarter inch distance from our center line out. Simple enough, how about that? All right, so let's step over to our main table. Let's start cutting some leather. As crafters, profit typically not our motivating factor. We're in it more for the joy of the craft. Where I'm going with this is that our budget, it's always on our mind. At Weaver, we've got multiple cuts of leather and we've got multiple price points. In fact, I think this is one of the best deals in the building. This is a V-cut double shoulder. The point is, we have all kinds of options depending on our budget. Now, if I'm gonna stamp or tool, I'm either gonna go with our Weaver Select, one of my all-time favorites, and we see this in most videos, or how about this video? Let's jump over to our Herman Oak. This is beautiful leather. Okay, so to mark our pattern, we're gonna go with a pen. Absolutely the worst possible way to go, but I need to be able to see where my line is. But also, let's just reduce the risk of using a pen. First off, let's make sure we don't have any excess ink on the end of that pen. Now I'm gonna find a good spot to lay this in. Very nice. Now let's lightly trace with our pen. 
and there we go, okay? Now, this is gonna be tough to cut out of a full side of leather. So what I'm going to do, let's cut this piece out close, then we'll be able to work with it. Now, sharp blade, new blade every time, absolutely. And that separates that piece out good. Now it's gonna be much easier to cut because I need to be accurate with my cuts. So let's reset here, trim this to size. And now we've got a much more manageable piece of leather to work with. We don't have to cut this whole thing freehand. We can absolutely use our straight edge for our two straight lines. And then down here at the bottom, I'm gonna use my square. Then I'll cut in between, it's gonna look good. And we've got that. Now all we have to do is just freehand our curves. But in all honesty, we're not going too far here with our stitch line and our stitch line ends somewhere right in here. So outside of that, doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical. And there we are. Well, that was easy enough. That looks good. We're gonna have a good meet on both sides. Let's do one more reset. We need to get this wet. Now we've got a much larger panel of leather here, so I'm gonna need a much larger bin, but these are inexpensive and we can find these at most big box stores. Now we're gonna drag our leather through the water. We can absolutely use a sponge and apply. I wanna use slow, deliberate strokes. The problem is it's hard to get the water consistent with a sponge, so it's something this size. So let's drag this slowly through our water and I'm gonna give it maybe eight, 10 seconds. And there we are, I've got a good moisture content in this. Now this is not perfect by any means, not scientific. What we can do though, if we feel like we've got too much water in this, really we're just gonna let this sit and air dry for about half an hour, let some of that excess moisture evaporate out. But there we go, let's leave that right there for about 30 to 45 minutes. I really got a lot of water into this piece of leather, so I've given this about an hour, really about an hour and 15 minutes, but now I can feel it. It's not soaking wet. I can feel the moisture in it, but it's not dripping wet. Now, we're casing our leather. We've got a good video on how to do this, but the big point, we don't have to go this route. We can wet our leather with a sponge, give it 15 minutes, and we can do our stamping or tooling. But if we take the time, we plan ahead, this makes all the difference in the outcome of our stamping and tooling. So let's step over to our pattern table. And there is no way I'm gonna get this big panel in this shot, but it's not important. What we're gonna do, another use for our pattern sheeting. So I'm gonna lay a piece down. I'm gonna take a second piece, but I wanna make sure I don't have any debris on this side. So let's lay that on top. And now I'm just gonna take a piece of suede, whatever we've got in our shop, and I'm just gonna roll that out across that. Good, we're gonna let that sit between eight and 24 hours. Typically for me, I just let it go overnight. While that's casing, let's work on our straps. To save us a little time with the video, I've just cut out a strap from our main side about two and a half inches wide. So we need two three quarter inch wide straps. Let's go with our wooden strap cutter. Cost per use, this is the best piece of equipment in our shop. I use it on every project. So we're gonna set this at three quarters of an inch. Let's cut two straps out of this piece. Yeah, how easy is that? And let's do this. So right here, I can feel those. They're exactly the same thickness right here. Let's bend that back. Same thing. Again, this is a great tool. So we need one at 24 inches and we need one at 36. We've got those cut. And in fact, these two pieces, nothing in my shop goes to waste. We paid for it, let's use it. So right here, I've got just a small pattern right here. In fact, it's just a generic pattern. I can move this to either end. So let's start right here. Let's mark our holes for our rivets and our buckle. And now I'm just gonna scoot this to the other end, mark our size holes. Same on the other. We've got that. Okay, next step, let's add a bevel and a groove. So I'm gonna set my groover one eighth of an inch. 
Let's do both sides on the front, each strap. And notice too, if we're ever squirrely with our groover, we could always butt this next to our straight edge, give us a perfect groove. Okay, over to a number two master tool edger. We're going with eight to nine, and I'm going to bevel both front sides, both back sides. And that never bevels as easy as the face or the top grain. So we've got this. Let's go over to our revolving punch. This is a great purchase. Replaceable tubes, but this is drop forged. It's a good piece of equipment because of the weight. It's going to reduce the fatigue on our arm. I'm going to go with the second or third tube up from the bottom. Let's punch all of our holes. And one more hole. Very good. We've got those. Let's step over to our punch table. Let's add our punches. Now, typically, if we let these hang off the table, the second we hit these, they're going to slide off the table. <laughs> Happens every time. So to keep that from happening, I'm just going to try to do this. So let's start with our English point. This is a belt tip punch, three quarter inch. We're going to do this on both straps. Okay, easy enough. Now around to our oblong punch. Now the rule of thumb is if we're going with a three quarter inch strap, I want a three quarter inch oblong. Actually, I'd like to add to that just a little bit to give that buckle a little extra room to move. So let's go with a one inch, do our best to center. Good. Now the last step, we don't have to go this way, but I've got the tool, I'm gonna use it. But also, it's a very nice touch. Let's go with a round end punch on this end. Good. Now, sometimes that'll happen. We can just clip that off with our knife. And we'll do that on our main table. But other than that, our straps are ready to go. So let's give our case to leather overnight. Then we'll pick up, do some stamping. We've given our scabbard overnight. Let's open this up. And there we are. We are assured the moisture content is consistent throughout this, but now we need to give this about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, let it air dry. I want this to start to return to its natural color. It's been relatively humid here lately, so all told, I've given this about three hours. Well, now a length of time, not what we're looking for, what we want. First off, this is starting to return to its natural color. Secondly, though, I can feel it. I can feel the moisture in it, but the body has returned. This is ready to stamp. So let's mark for our windows. And my cut could have been a little bit better on that. So let's do this. Let's mark on one side. Now I'm gonna use our small scratch off so we get a very thin line. Same on the other side, let's flop our pattern. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other end. And that piece is marked. Now we're doing two windows here. We could certainly carry our basket weave all the way across, but that's going to have a pretty good bend to it. And I don't want that stamping to back out on us. So if we break that into two windows, to me, that's a much better look. Okay, let's go do some stamp work. Let's start with our smaller panels first. Now, with a basket weave, we're gonna have to offset this for our first two lines. Where I'm going with this is that we're going to be spinning our project. That gives us ample opportunity to ding this leather. So let's be careful, but once we get those two lines in, we can just work our way out from there. We don't have to turn our project. So let's start right here. Let's get two anchor lines drawn in. I'm gonna put those roughly in the middle, but I wanna make sure that I am parallel to this line. Okay, and the same over here. Okay, we've got those. Now I'm gonna do my best to get a good camera shot here. And in all honesty, focus in such a small area, it's a little hard to do. But let's start with this beautiful basket weave. I love these tools. In fact, these are half the price of what I think they should be. Very quality tool. So let's start right here. We're gonna go with our one and a half pound maul. 
Now I'm going to start right in the middle, do my best to get the edge of my stamp in our guideline. How about that? Very crisp, very clean. That's what we're looking for. So to keep from spending too many times, let's work on both panels. Very nice. Okay, now we're going to offset this. We can go three ways here. We can butt the very corner of that tool right next to the inside impression. We could bring it all the way out. What I like to do is I like to split the difference, but we need to keep an eye on this. We've got our anchor line left to right, so we're going to be straight here, but we need to keep an eye out because we want our tool straight up and down as well. That looks good thus far because we cased our leather. We took the time to do it. We're getting a very crisp, very clean stamp. Now I can start to work my way out. But as we get closer to our edge, we're going to use a camouflage tool. That's going to take up about three eighths of an inch all the way around. So what I want to do is like right here, as I approach that edge, I'm going to lean in on my tool. There we go, it's a little more faded on the outside, so therefore that camo will more easily cover that up. Now as that line gets a little bit closer, I'm just going to lean in just a little bit more. We just need a little bit of the impression right there. Okay, let's do a little clean up there. And just a little clean up, leaning in on that. Okay, well that looks good. So now we're going to jump over to a camouflage tool. It's going to make it look like the basket weave is going up under the edge of the window. Again, a great tool. This is a fluted basket weave. Love the design, but love the detail on this. Now, we want these to match. We want these to be consistent across our border or our edge. So let's start right here. I'm going to drop in. One in my corner, and one in my corner. Now I'm going to start to work together, because what we can do is we can contract or spread these a little bit more to make sure they're consistent. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now as I get closer, I'm just going to eyeball this. I can just make the smallest little mark there. The camera won't see that, but I can make a mark. Actually, that's looking like it's going to match up nicely, but we've got a little extra room there. So I'm going to spread these out just a hair between each of the stamps to get that to meet perfectly. And there we are. Well, that line looks good. I'm going to finish out this piece the same way. Well, that looks good. Now I clipped a corner a little close there and there, but we're the only ones that are going to see things like that. To everybody else, that looks great. I'm going to camo the edge on this one. And a perfect meet. Well, those look good. Perfect. No, absolutely not. But they look good. I'm going to do the same thing to the other panels. And one more to fit down in there. Actually, that looks pretty good. Very happy with that. Okay, we need to give this 24 hours dry time. Make sure this is completely dry before our next step. We've given our rifle scabbard about 24 hours dry time. Feels good, looks good. This is going to look great. So let's step over to our main table, work on our edges. Let's start with our groover. I'm going to set this at 1 8 of an inch. Let's go all the way around on our face.
good. We've got a nice groove line there. Now, we're going to chisel our sides separately so we don't have to go through two plies. All right, let's jump over to our number two edger. Now, big point here. We're going to edge all the way around on our front, but only portions of our back. But big point, quality leather, quality tool. Notice how easily my edger moves. And there we are. Well, that looks good thus far. Now on our back, I don't want to edge where we're going to sew these two pieces together. I want those to come together evenly. But outside of that, we need to slick that now, just make it easier on ourselves. So let's take our pattern. Right here, I've got this marked. That's where we're going to stop our stitch, start and stop. So let's take a, let's take our scratch all. What I'm going to do, just make a small mark where we're going to start our stitch line or stop. And then up here, let's make the same mark. Okay, now let's edge outside of those two marks, but let's don't forget this end. It's a little bit tougher to edge the flesh side. There we go. We don't have to be exactly perfect on that. And then down here, let's just edge between our two marks. Good. Okay, now let's slick these two areas. We've got a pretty good slick on that. Now we're doing this upside down. Let's don't press hard enough to where we ding our top grain. In fact, right here, these are marks from our marble from simply moving this around. We'll never see that, but it's a good point. Okay, let's reset here. We need to add two more marks. Like I said, we're going to chisel our edges separately. Makes the whole thing easier on us, our tools, and our leather. But what I would like to do, let's give our chisel holes the best chance to line up, easy to do. So let's go back to our paper pattern. I'm going to flip this over, okay? We've got our start or stop, same on this end, because really we could sew either direction. But what I would like to do, let's find a center point between these two marks. Does not have to be exact by any means. So let's find that mark, and I'm going to press through good both pieces of paper now when we open this up we know that is perfectly symmetrical we'll chisel from that point out these are going to line up nicely so let's step over to our pattern and i've got my holes punched in this close enough to the edge that when i mark that that mark actually falls into my groove line good okay let's do the same thing down here Good, we've got that. All right, let's step over to our punch table. Let's drop in our chisel line. We're going with our flat chisel. This is our eighth inch flat. This is my favorite chisel. Now, I like the diamond as well. The problem is, is if we're gonna marry two pieces together, those holes on a diamond have to be perfect, or we're gonna spend all kinds of time trying to get our needles to go through. Not the case here. In fact, we've actually got a little room for error here. So right there, we've got our center mark. I'm going to drop my chisel right in that line. There we go. Because we're only going through one ply, we, we stand a great chance of getting that perfectly straight. And it feels like, yeah, there we go. Now I can feel all my tines across the bottom. So let's place our finger on the inside and slowly the work, work that out. So from this point, I'm going to drop my tine in my last hole, first time, last hole. But I want to make sure I get that as square as I can Again, because we want these holes to match up nicely. And if we take our time, we absolutely will. There we go. Good. I'm going to work my way down to our end point. Now, as we enter curves or bends, we can always jump down to fewer times. But right here, we've straightened out. So let's go back to our six. And one last. That is perfect. Good. I'm running my hand across there so I can feel that my tines have gone through the leather. Okay. Now let's work our way from this end down to our mark. Now again, when we get down to our corner, with a tight corner, what I can do is let's just mark. Now we can take two tines through. 
and it looks like we need just one more time. Now, since we're coming in at an angle, what I'd like to do is let's just mark that and then come with a, come in with our single tine so we've got a nice flat hole, okay? Well, that wasn't hard. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. And one more, two holes there. That is perfect, and I bet if we counted our holes, we'd have exactly the same number of holes on both sides. Now that sounds tedious. We can do that, but it's easy to do. So let's take our six tine. So there's six, 12, 18. I can count 25 holes in about three seconds. So it's not difficult to do. Nice, let's step over to our main table. We're gonna add a beautiful die and a top coat. We're gonna go with my favorite dye color. Actually, it's a mix, pro dye mix, 50-50, light brown and mahogany. In fact, I like it so much, I keep a mix in my shop at all times. Now, we could apply with a sponge, but it's gonna be tough to get this consistent because we'll have to apply on the face, flip it over, apply on the back, and just hope we don't get more dye back there because that'll start to show through. So we're gonna dip dye. Now, the downside to this, we're gonna need a good bit of dye. But if we go with the quartz and we do a 50-50 mix, we've already got enough dye. So let's run this through easily. And let's let the excess drain off. And now with a rag, let's just mop up any excess that we may have. Oh, that is gonna look good, okay? Now over to our straps. I've got just a little hook made from wire from any hardware store, inexpensive. Let's run these through our die. Good, okay, let's mop up any excess there. All right, now one of the great things about our pro die, I'm gonna walk away, leave it right where it is. Let's give this about 90 minutes, then we'll come back in with our top coat. We've given our scabbard ample time to dry, clean, consistent dye. In fact, right here, we've got some spots. I think that's more of me bouncing it around while I make a video. Not the perfect way for a perfect outcome. Doesn't matter, this is gonna look good. So let's jump over to our Saddle Lac, one of my favorite top coats. First off, for ease, we spray it on. Secondly, it dries in about one minute and it looks good. With this, it's a lacquer based. So I'm gonna keep a piece of tape over that nozzle because it will dry out and it will spit. Secondly, this cannot be cold. It needs to be room temp or a little bit above. Now with this, what I'm gonna do is make one pass, clean the nozzle and make another pass. If it spits, we've got a rag here. We just daub that, it goes away. So let's start right here with our strap. I'm gonna hold my can about 10 inches out, maybe eight to 10 and let's just make one pass. Good, let's flip it around and make a second. And that's it, we walk away. We let that dry and in fact, that's gonna take about a minute and a half to dry. Good, now that's gonna look a little inconsistent, but let's give it a minute, let it dry. Because right there, notice those look good. Okay, let's give that a minute to dry. Then we're gonna punch some holes and sew this. We've given this about three minutes dry time, one of the things I love about Satellite. But here's the downside. We've got to have good ventilation with this. I have a good cross breeze in my shop. If we don't, we need to apply this outdoors. Now, we're gonna punch our oblongs because if we dip dye with our oblongs here, we're gonna have little streaks of dye behind those oblongs where it gathered. But also, if we're gonna do an antique, I'll punch all my holes after I add the antique so that antique doesn't get down in all those holes and right here, transfer over to our thread. So let's start right here. Let's just mark for our oblongs. And we've got those marked, okay? Let's step over to our punch table. We're gonna add our oblongs, drop in our buckles. There's one thing we need to talk about when we're adding our oblongs to our pattern. I'm right-handed. So say if I'm gonna carry this on a saddle, this is gonna be on my right side. When we fold this around, unlike a holster, our stitch line is actually going to be up. So I want my oblongs on the back side. If we wanna change that, we simply flop our pattern. Now, on our oblong, we've got three quarter inch straps here, but let's go with a one inch, just to give those a little extra room.
Well, there we go. Our oblongs look good. Let's reset here. We'll add our buckles. Our pattern is made to accommodate a keeper if we're going to go with a heel bar buckle. But let's go with a three quarter inch center bar roller buckle. That roller is there to actually aid the strap as it moves through. And on our rivets, let's go with the medium double cap. That's the 5 16 inch. So let's load a buckle. I love the double cap rivets. We can snap the cap down onto the rivet without setting it. That's a big help if we want to make sure something fits or make sure holes line up. So with our rivet setter, let's let the end of this hang off. Let that bow hang off a little bit. Good. That looks nice. I'm going to do the same thing to the other strap. Nice. Let's step back over to our main table. We're going to lace our longer strap through because we won't be able to get to that once we sew it. We could sew first and then work this through those oblongs, but it's really kind of a headache. Let's just save ourselves the trouble. We'll run through these now. One thing, if I want my, if I want the tongue down on the face, I'm going to come across the body with a buckle on this end, but also this is going to be odd. We have to pay attention here. Shorter to the top, longer to the bottom. Well, that already looks good. We only have two steps left. We're going to sew slick. We're done with this beautiful scabbard. I love the Herman Oak and the Weaver Select. These are my two favorite leathers. The only difference I see is that the Herman Oak has got a little more body to it. So for a project like this, absolutely perfect. But where I'm going with this is let's go ahead and start to put a bend into this, make it a little easier on us when we're sewing. We've got a nice rifle scabbard coming together here. Okay, before we clip this into our pony, First off, we're going to go with the one millimeter Ritza. Proportion is everything. It's a larger project. Let's go with a little bit thicker thread. Our needles, these are our John James number 18. Now I'm going to put these on both ends of my thread. We're going to do a saddler stitch and I'm going to go about four times my length. Okay. On our pony, we can open this up down on the bottom. Let's go as far open as we can. It's a thicker project. And right here, I've just got some fleece, just some rag on the end of the claws here, just so I don't ding our project. Okay, so we've got a good bend on this. Let's bring this into our pony, but let's be careful. We don't want to ding anything. Open this up as far as we can. Okay. Good. Now let's clip that down where it is. All right. With our saddler stitch, I'm going to take, I'm going to put a needle on both ends and I'm going to take one needle and I'm going to work through my first hole. Let's see if we can figure out where that is. There we go. Okay. Now let's get that needle to go straight through there. That's it. Now let's clip this down because now the thread is telling us where our edges are going to meet and not our pony. So let's bring this through. Let's even out the length on our thread. And on our second hole, I'm going to open up from both sides. Good. And then let's slide the needles through at the same time. I can actually push. Right here, I can pull down on my thread and I can actually push with the thread if we don't have enough room to get our fingers in there. So let's pull that through. Let's add some tension to that. Good. Just to where I can see that thread slip below the top grain. And our second, same thing. And we're going to get caught on these, absolutely. But we don't have far to go to get around these straps. Well, that looks good thus far. I like that white thread. Now we're going four times our length, but I'm only planning on going about halfway down. So let's sew to that point. We'll tie a knot, then we'll finish out. That keeps us from having to deal with a very long piece of thread. And that looks good. Notice our meat. That is very nice. Okay, so to tie our knot, I'm going to come through the back side to the inside and same from this side to the inside. 
Okay, good. Now, let's tie a square knot, which is right over left, circle around, let's draw that down in there good and tight. Now, left over right, circle around, and let's draw that down in there good and tight. Oh, there we go. Very nice. Now, on my knife, I never use this part of the blade. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my thread across the blade instead of cutting in. Good. Now we can tuck those down in there. Our next hole, we're going to set up for that. We're actually going to start our stitch line in that hole. We'll never see our transition. I've got our needles loaded, so let's just push those two tails down in there. Good. And we're going to start on that same hole. Equal out our distance. Good. And let's just co continue to sew from here. And we're coming down to our last hole. One hole on this side and one hole on this side. Very nice. So now let's come through again. Come through the back, come through the front, and let's tie our square knot. And on the second turn to really get that crank down, I don't have enough strength in my hands. So let's take two of our knurled tools. Let's wrap this about three times, maybe four, and now let's tighten that down. Very good. That's a big help. Okay, let's trim. Good. Tuck those in. Well, this looks good. Back over to our main table. Let's finish up. Well, that is a good looking project coming out very nicely. One last step. Right here, we've got a good slick and the same down on this end. We'll hit those again, but let's concentrate on this edge for right now. We're going to go with some gum tragacanth. This gives us a nice slick. Let's use a dauber, and we're going to apply this to our edge. Good, we've got some gum trag on this. Now, with our slickers, we've got two great burnishers here, but in this situation, how about let's go with a piece of canvas. Let's bend that around and let's use this to slick our edge. Well, we've got a good slick on that. Okay, up here, let's just come back over this one more time with our gum trag. And there we go. Now on this end, we could hit that a little bit, but there's just not enough room in there. Let's wrap our straps around this, see how it looks. Well, there we go. That is a beautiful rifle scabbard. What a great project. Last up, well, how's our fit? How about that? Absolutely perfect. Just what we were looking for. Great fit and a classic traditional look. I think we nailed it on this one. Now, most of us don't own a horse. Well, it would not be tough. A couple billets and a belt strap, and we can turn this into a back hanger. But I hope you have a great time with your rifle scabbard, and I hope it comes out beautifully. Good luck with your projects. <laughs>